to the No Morning Show here on CTT. I am Natalie Lagor, and of course, to my right is Rock Hut. And we are celebrating Calypso History Month and paying homage to all those who have come and gone and those who are still here and even those who haven't even started their journey as yet because we recognize how important Calypso is to the landscape of Trinidad and Tobago. Even I and all, I know two songs, David Rudder, don't vex with me for change to your lyrics. Just now I learned them. About two lyrics. You changed the whole line. You changed the whole line. You kept the intention though. So that's the most important ah, part. That's the most ah, important part. I didn't part. even know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This morning we're going to get things started. Uh, chatting with the Education and Research Officer at Tuco. Megan Sylvester is on the line with us. Good morning to you, Megan. Good morning, Megan. Good morning, good morning, and thank you for having me. Uh -huh. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Roka. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being with us here this morning. So, Megan, it is Calypso History Month. Just talk to us about how you're going to kick off, how Tuco is going to kick off the celebrations for the month, because, we, oh God, we know we're in a pandemic and we know we have to change the way we do things, but I'm sure Tuco is going to be doing a lot. Indeed. And thank you for having me, as I said. So, today is October the 1st, and we're kicking off Calypso History Month actually admitting that we are going to be celebrating the entire month focusing on Brother Resistance, our recently passed president. And so the theme for this month is the bell rings. Of course, emblazoning that whole idea of Brother Resistance with that bell in his hand and singing about, you know, this music that really, you know, captures the entire island. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so important, you know, that one of the things that we do is to celebrate the people who've contributed so much to the culture of Trinidad and Tobago because whether or not people recognize it, the culture is a huge part of who we are. Culture how we think, we are. what we uh -huh. do, you know, how we how we organize ourselves, it's all about the culture. So uh, you, well, Megan, I want to know what, what you guys doing to celebrate better resistance this month. Yeah. Okay. So of course as you said that is the main theme. But what we're focusing is on having different competitions, different shows that we're gonna be having. Now, especially workers, you know that my focus is education and research. Mm -hmm. And I want to actually speak more to that this morning. What I'm going to be doing, as I usually do, is I'm going to be going into the school system. Now, we know that there is an issue about COVID-19 and vaccinations and the school system. But still, what I have actually set up is the intention with the VAPA teachers, the visual and performing arts teachers, and I'm going to be doing Calypso presentations in the school online. We're going to be keeping it online this year again. So that becomes important. We're going to be using the theme, the bell reigns, so that we can just use that to form the presentation to ensure that the students in the secondary schools, of course, Tobago and Trinidad, know more about brother resistance, know more about the Calypso art form, and understand the relationship, as, of course, between a rap so and Calypso music. Megan, I, I want to I want to start it back and I want to what's the relationship between Calypso and Rapso? <laughs> <laughs> well of course we know that we're talking about Rapso coming from Calypso and also adding that rap element, that, that talk calypso kind of attitude and, and, and training. And so it becomes important because when I go to a lot of the schools, usually workers, what tends to happen is that there are young people there, and you know, we tend to speak about this aging population that listens or imbibes Calypso. Mm -hmm. And we want to sort of use the Rapso art form, you know, because Brother Resistance, of course, was the Rapso king, and we're going to use his music as a way to connect with the younger generation to get them involved in understanding that, yes, we're talking about speech patterns, we're talking about using language, we're talking about using a rap style mm -hmm. together with the traditional Calypso training and art but Megan do you think the younger people are um, they, they are close to rap so do you think that they, they they listen to rap so or they can relate rather to rap so music well the way in which we conceive such a concept is that younger people of course would be interested in hip-hop they may be interested in aspects of rap and even trap so right. and so we're gonna be using this this knowledge base that they have about rapping to music to introduce to those who may or may not be aware because I just want to tell you a little bit about the forms that we'll be going to be starting actually with form one and we then go to form twos and threes and go all the way up to form six because of course we go across several types of schools so we'll be going to for example like Trinity College we go to QRC which of course is the alma mater of Brother Resistance yeah. we go to St. Joseph's Convent St. Joseph and you know we go to Bishops in Tobago Signal Hill in Tobago Princess Town Secondary, Marabella Secondary, 
Sandy Grandy Secondary. So we go across a wide cross section of schools. And so we touch on different ages, you know, of the students in the secondary schools. And so meeting them where they are to help them understand how to craft a lyric, what you have to do in terms of uh, learning to write a song and how you have to get involved in the art form in terms of understanding the musicality of the music as well. Because I also play video, discuss the lyrics, discuss the stage performance, there's all of that. But of course, importantly, as I said earlier, the focus is on Brother Resistance. So I'm going to be using the music of Brother Resistance, using yeah. the videos of Brother Resistance to introduce him fully to the secondary school student. And I think that is so important because, you know, you know, when you want to develop a mind, you have to start from early. So I'm happy that you all are starting from the primary schools. And, you know, I heard Rockers ask about if you think people will be able to relate the mm -hmm. children to rap some music. I think they will be able to if they're introduced to it and if they're taught about it to learn to understand it and, you know, how it is different from regular rap, how it is different from just Calypso by itself. And what makes it rap? So what are the musical elements, you know? Is it, is it the beat? Is it the beat per minute? Is it, you know, just the lyrical content? What are the elements that, makes it, that make it different from what we're normally used to? But not only that, it's still an opportunity to introduce them to Calypso too. Because somebody might hear it and decide, well, I want to rap. Somebody might say, I want to do straight Calypso. Or you might have those who say, okay, rap so is good for us. So I think that it's very important that the TUCO is deciding to go in the schools and to teach the children about brother resistance. And I know that coming out of that, we will get some really, really positive development. But, you know, apart from being in the schools and teaching the children, what else are we doing for the month of October? All right. So as I said earlier, so I want to let everyone know, keep tuned to the Facebook page and Instagram page of Tuco so that you will know as we roll out the different activities. As I said, we're going to be having competitions, we're going to be having shows, our usual extempo shows, our usual calypso shows, and we have some special features coming out in terms of competitions um, to, to know about the calypso, to sing the calypso, to talk the calypso. So keep looking at that Facebook page and the Instagram page as we roll out. Well, we, of you, course, always start off with our Thanksgiving service and paying homage, of course, to the Creator for having us here as a body, as two co charged well, with God. the of Calypso in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. I want to tell you and Tuco to stay tuned to the No Morning Show because we'll be having our Calypso competition here in, yeah. observ in, 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 in observation of Calypso History Month. Is observance or observation? Observ in observance. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Going on the one. <laughs> in observance of Calypso History Month. So I don't know. You probably could give her a little blight that she call in and see if she would know. No, nah, I'm going to know. I'm going to know all. I'm going to know all. So she so? Can't, yeah, she can't call in. I'm going to be cheating. No, 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 no. You, yeah, want, no, no. you want us to test it? No. You want to test it? No? Yes. No, we're no, not no, testing it. No. Yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> You're wicked. You're too wicked. You're too wicked. <laughs> Brockers, one of the things I also want to mention is a special project that I've also been working on. And this is something that we intend to share when we go to Nalis, because we don't only go to the secondary school, as part of the education and research portfolio. My remit is also to go to the general pu public of Trinidad and Tobago to do the education and, you know, demonstrate the research that we've done. I've been doing a project, Calypso, entitled Calypso, the New York Experience, where I spent some time in New York just looking at the role and, and the responsibility of Calypsonians and to some extent some soccer artists who used to live in Trinidad and Tobago, perform, compete, and then they migrated to, to New York to speak about the underground scene, what would have happened when they migrated, what led them to migrate, and what that scene is all about in New York, you know, as we consider all the aspects of Calypso, you know, so mm -hmm. that is something else because I think it becomes important for us to understand that when someone leaves the shores of Trinidad and Tobago, it doesn't mean that they become a foreigner. You know, Nello or Nelson, Lord Nelson has a song called Foreigner. Yeah. And in that song, he speaks about the whole issue that, you know, perhaps his, 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 you know, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago tend to sort of spurn, you know, the, 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 the Trinidadian or Tobagonian who migrates and goes away. And yeah. if they don't see them coming back to perform, they don't see them coming back to compete, if they don't hear the music on the radio, sometimes people think that they are dead because, you know, there are always these rumors that this one has died or that one has died. And really, Brother Resistance and I conceived this project with the intention to bring back into the consciousness 
of Trinbegonian, um, the whole concept of our diaspora yeah. in terms of Calypso being so dominant. So wherever you perform Calypso, you're Calypsonian because you are continuing in the tradition. So this is a really very special project, and we're going to be rolling that out as the month, um, you know, uh, continue. You know, Megan, yeah. one, of the, one of the interesting people who did that migration thing and still had a big, big hand in the development of Calypso is uh, Ralston Charles. I know he, he moved to New York as well. Is he part of this project that you're working on? Did you yes, get a chance to chat with him? I, yes, because when I first uh, went up to, to New York, I would have engaged Charlie uh, to, to discuss the entirety of the project and ways in which he can be um, part of the collaboration. Mm -hmm. So it becomes yeah. important, but not only in terms of the arranging production elements. Um, or promotion. We also did several interviews with males and females. And, and what is important as well is we felt it necessary, of course, unfortunately, Rokas, during the period of the time when the, the project was in its full swing, we, you know, oh, right. Brother Resistance passed. But I, I, I continued to work on the interviews. And it's interesting because what we decided to do prior to his passing was to focus not only on the Calypsonian, who is the performer, but songwriters. Yeah background singers and other persons who were associated with the Calypso at all. So you take it at all points. So when we present this information, firstly, of course, to the general public in terms of the NALIS lectures that we intend to have, as well as to the students in the secondary school, what we know will happen is that it will bring back into the consciousness of people. Listen, these persons are still performing in some cases. Of course, some persons have retired, but a yeah. lot of persons have continued to use the opportunity to take a so beyond the shores of Trinidad and Tobago, and in this particular example, to New York. Well, Calypso in the diaspora is definitely something that I'm happy is being explored because the reality is you're sharing the culture outside of Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. as well. And sometimes yeah. you know, they appreciate it so much more when they're outside of Trinidad and Tobago than definitely. when they are at home. Definitely. So I think that that diaspora market is definitely a, a, a big deal. I can and speak to that because I'm telling you the things that I never appreciated when I was in Jamaica, everything has become magnified. No, it's true. Of course. It's literally course. true. There's a, to me... The diaspora of a country is always, always seem to be more in tune with the culture and more accra with what's going on than the people who live inside the country. But you know, Megan, one of the challenges that we face today is that Calypso is not as popular as it once was. So that diaspora market that you're talking about, their experience or their memories of Calypso that they would have passed on to their children would be very different from what we in Trinidad and Tobago experience now. How, how is Tuko, uh, you know, dealing with this challenge? Okay, so that, thank you for that question, Rokas. One of the, the presentations or the talks that I recently did um, was, it was an online um, conversation that I had with the students and faculty at Cornell University in New York. And it was entitled, People Power Movements and Caribbean Festival Culture. And I used it as an opportunity to speak to the diaspora in another type of space, this educational academic space. And, and the presentation was well received. And one of the, the topics, one of the, the issues rather that I dealt with was the contribution of, um, you know, Mr. Phillips and, and Kenny Phillips and the work that he's doing with WAC. Right. Because that has been one of the vehicles yeah. in terms of partnership with Tuco, in terms of getting our culture, specifically Calypso music and the rest of the culture, soca, parang, chut music and steel pan music to the diaspora. So I spoke about that, um, his, 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 the blueprint that he had to get the music out to the diaspora and it becomes so important when we can speak to one of our own making yeah. that contribution from right here in Trinidad and Tobago and getting the information to the diaspora and so it becomes just as, as Natalie said you know you realize that persons who are outside of the national space are really so appreciative of the information that is shared and the discussions that we had you know in terms of the fact that we were able to talk about black capital the continuation of black capital for Calypsonians and other uh, performers from Trinidad and Tobago who were able to continue um, making a money, as they say, during the pandemic, which seems to be going on and on. Yeah, you know what? And that is definitely so important because really WAC Radio is one of those stations that many people in the diaspora can tap into. And the thing is that it's 100% what? Local. Yeah. So you get all the content in terms of musical content that's coming out of Trinidad and Tobago. And I remember when Kenny Phillips was here, when he spoke of the struggle mm -hmm. 
that he went through to be able to even get to that and that's why it, the name of this station is even WAC Radio <laughs> because people thought he was crazy yeah. for trying to do what he did but you're right Megan we really have to say congratulations to Kenny Phillip for you know flagging, flying that flag high and not being daunted by all the naysayers which we have a lot of them here and it comes on to everything Trinbegonian, which is too ridiculous to me and I, I, as a Jamaican I still don't understand it but I'm so happy that you know we were able to get somebody like Kenny Phillips to invest in the culture in such a way and hopefully even Tuco can give him that support you know that he so needs because even now I'm sure he could use it and just to add of course that the project that I spoke about Calypso the New York experience is a collaborative project between Tuco and work. So that is an yeah. example of that kind of relationship because it's all about the culture. Of course, you know, in Tuko, we also, we always talk about the fact that by Calypso, our stories are told. And this is another way that has been conceived to tell our story. You know, Calypso History Month has been, you know, um, we've been celebrating it since 2000 and, and two, and it becomes important for us to continue to do that kind of work every year, letting the populace, letting the diaspora know about the Calypso art form. Well, Megan, I want to thank you so much for joining us to kick off Calypso History Month. And congratulations to Tuku and all the best yeah. going forward for the rest of the month with all the work that you guys have in store. I know you're not going to sleep very much, but it's all good because it yeah. means it. And don't forget to tune in to our competition, which, which is, kicks off here today. You can participate. We're not banning you because we want to see how many Tuko members know the lyrics. You see what, you see the wickedness. you see what I mean. <laughs> Megan, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, Bye, Megan. All having. the best. Thank you. That's my consult study education and research officer at Tuco sharing yeah. some information about how Tuco is going to be celebrating Calypso History Month yeah. 2021 inside the pandemic. Everything has yeah. to be virtual, but a special focus placed on the, the impact of the people who would have migrated to New York in particular. Right. I'm Calypso. just calling it Calypso in the diaspora. They're doing a whole project on that. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're thinking, they're not thinking they're going to be going in the schools from primary schools to talk to the children and of course to educate them about brother and resistance. You know, the thing is, the Tuko have been going into the schools. This yeah. year, the theme is brother resistance and they're going to yeah. use Rapso as that vehicle to be able to, to, well, to share the Calypso information. Maybe that's why we still have new and upcoming Calypsonians and don't dismiss them. Voice was once a Calypsonian. Patricia Roberts was once a Calypsonian. A Ilfan lot of Al, these people. Second star. A lot like of all these, of these people started in, yeah, they started, started in Calypso. Mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to do the groundwork, join the Calypso movement, and make your way up. And some people choose to stick with it. Like Helen Francis, choose Hela to, McIntosh. Yeah. These people have stuck with it, and they're still doing Calypso to this day. And, and doing, doing great. very good. Exactly. Yeah. Mr. Shaq. Good morning to all the Calypsonians. Everybody who watch and we say good Happy morning. Happy Calypso love, love. History Month. Let's take a quick break and come back with more inside the now morning show. Stay tuned. I see the ring of the bell for the rap, so we don't...